Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton <laughs> Coffee Break, where it is all things Halloween today. Hey girls, what's up? <laughs> Look at that, I love this cup. So Cheers. Yeah. Halloween. It, everybody gets excited. I don't care what age, whatever, right? <laughs> so yeah, here we go. So I'm like glam witch trying to be, and uh, how do you like my manicure? I love your manicure. Mm -hmm. Now, I stay tame this year. Which is so out of character. This is as tame as I get. I was a zombie before zombies <laughs> were vogue, and I just decided that would be too much for the show. Oh, well, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this zombie. Darlene, I love the little purple hat. <laughs> <laughs> you're cute. You're a cute witch. You're a cute, cute witch. Absolutely. You're a glam witch. Oh, God. So, you know, yeah, I'm getting my Halloween on because we don't get kids anymore. You know, um, your neighborhood doesn't it's get changed. kids. Well, you know, as the kids have gotten older in the neighborhood and so forth, and we live on Windy Saddle Hill, which I actually would recommend. You're going to be very careful walking. But last year was the first year that we got absolutely nobody. So we're going to make I think other I plans. Had two. Yeah, you're, you're right down the road. <laughs> but there have been wonderful memories oh my here goodness. in Hopkinton with the Halloween. <laughs> We get a good bit. I mean, we got about half of what we normally got last year, and I think it's that whole age, you know, because we had a very large active play group in our community for a while. Yeah. And so there was a lot of kids. We used to get about 150. Wow. But we get, last year, I'd say we were in like the 60s. I, oh my so God, that's amazing. I, I can remember years where the people kids would come, come to our neighborhood, park at Sandy Beach. Yeah. Well, and, and that used to happen, and I would actually have to when my kids got back, ask them for all the candy they didn't want so I could replenish the candy bucket because I'd run out of candy. <laughs> oh, we did too. They didn't mind running. I think there was maybe less cars or something. And the kids would just cut through the woods and we used to have a mob. But you guys, well, yeah. we used to go together. Exactly. Yeah. But you exactly. guys, like, the houses are somewhat distance apart. So, you know, you, yeah. you've got to They got to work more. out. Right. I mean, our houses are fairly close together and stuff. I mean, growing up, I would only go to a few houses around us. My parents live on a busy street like you guys do. My sister, on the other hand, really got into it. And um, if you went around the corner up Oak Street in Ashland, there's, and you had to go like a half a mile up, there's a set of apartments. And that was like, you know, the cash cow for candy because yes, you could yes. go up and down. Just you know, collect. they're all garden apartments <laughs> and they go from one to the other. But I think I, in my entire life, I may have gone up that far once. So when yeah. I was four years old, we moved out to the country. But we would drive back into our old neighborhood to go trick or treating. And so that's what we always did. You were one of them. We were one of them. But it was our neighbors. <laughs> and so they loved seeing us. They loved seeing us. But it was weird. The town I grew up in, I grew up in Pennsylvania. We didn't trick or treat on Halloween. We did it on the last Tuesday of the month. Oh. Like Thanksgiving. Why? So, and they still do it. Well, I was well we give out booze. I had no clue. <laughs> and we give out booze and candy. So, like, when you're giving out booze to, uh, like, people that aren't your neighbors, you're like, Where'd you guys come from? That's funny. Oh, we give. I only give out booze to my. I used to give out booze when to my neighbors. So I wouldn't give it out. That's to what it is. Because when the moms or dads are traipsing around with the kids, yeah. all, that's a we great time to see your neighbors. I mean, we have wagons down. and golf carts oh, yeah. and things like Aww. that. Four wheelers coming by. So, how is, is Halloween different uh, as a parent than it was growing up as a kid? And any, um, what was it like in Pennsylvania growing up? Well, doing Halloween. Well, because we would go around the neighborhood, my parents would go to somebody's house. We'd start there, and we needed to end up there, and we knew the circuit, and they wouldn't go with us. You right, know? no, yeah. They, you wouldn't be escorted or all that. You would just be, and of course, they were drinking at that. <laughs> they were partying on their <laughs> they own. They were partying on their own. <laughs> um, but also, the costumes were different. Yeah. They're, They're kind of like the plastic thing you have on your face. Oh, my God. You know, and you can... I had a Cinderella you one like that. You can't see. You can't see. Yeah, try. right, right. And I had Lucy. Um, but, yeah, and, and you'd buy those this flammable that if you got near a flame they'd probably ignite oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean think about what that stuff was made out of what was your favorite Halloween costume growing up I don't know if I had one really How about you? my sister went as a gypsy all the time uh, she would just throw on like a bunch of costume jewelry and she was a pillowcase gal out there oh, hauling stuff out. I mean, yeah, I loved being a I was a you know, bride I mean like Frankenstein bride one time I was a um, cat 
you know, with and I did some well, elaborate I did makeup that when stuff. I was Twenty you know. something. Oh, well, okay. Uh, yeah. Going into the bars with girlfriends. Oh, well, it was that kind of a cat. No, I had a whole lep. I mean, it was a whole. Oh, well, we thing. had, you know, but well, you know, true. we were very cute. Yeah, I don't know. Just yeah, traditional stuff. I don't know. Me no. and my girlfriend. I went as an elf once, and she went as Santa Claus. Oh, that's yeah. funny. But I think I, I would never collect more than what would be in one of those old plastic buckets. Right, 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 right. And now. the other kids were like really hauling it in. What was your favorite candy? Mm. Still Milky Way. Snickers, still my favorite. So I have to admit, some of the obscure candies that only show up at Halloween were my favorite. Like what? Well, you know, so there's something going around on the internet that, like, how to trade candy, and and they showed the orange and black wrapper candy, which I can't remember. Mary Jane's. Well, I love yeah. Mary Jane's, but but dots. Yeah, I loved all of that stuff. All that old fashioned candy. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was the one, you know, hauling that in. And that plastic stuff with the liquid in it, whether it was the oh, little, love you know, that kind of stuff. Oh my god, oh, the I plastic lips. The lips. I love the lips. Oh, I hated that, that stuff. stuff. I don't even see that in the stores. Oh, the plastic they, lips. That was they, a favorite. Or the it, fake cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. You could blow the sugar puff out. Oh my god. Oh yeah, bad, bad role models, but. So, you know, around Halloween, I was asking, you know, the folks on the page, any scary stories, stories. or anything around here? And, uh, of course, not Hopkinton, but in the area, the John Stonehouse story is known. Um, haunted. Haunted. And I don't know, you know, darling, you, you're from Ashton. You might be able to share that story better. But, the, I mean, most people know about it, but there are a lot of newcomers. To, well, John, John Stone has you know. many stories. Many? I, yeah, yeah, the little I mean, girl that was hit by the train. Well, that's the one I see. I see her when I'm in there. And you you see, see her? Well, I just... <laughs> <laughs> no, all right, darling, tell. I so, see dead What do you people. mean? <laughs> right. But um, also John Stone is a ghost there. There's also someone who's been shot there. Um, the basement's haunted. So growing... Ooh. So the Fourniers owned John Stone's and what was the general store. And I worked at the general store next door, which is now Lunkers. And so it was a brother and sister that owned the two when mm. I did. So we did a lot of a back and forth between, and um, the you, little girl would be back behind. You would, you could cut right behind down the railroad tracks between the two businesses. And she'd be out there. And night, she'd be, day, What did she look like? Oh, to you? She, no, she's out there a lot. She'd be like, hey there. <gasps> no. And, stuff, and I would just bolt, and she disappears. It's up, but she's right there by the tracks yep. behind behind John Stones. So, so now I have to And the attic is really creepy and the basement's really creepy at John Stones. And it's real. So I have to tell mm. you that I do believe mm -hmm. because not here, but an old, old farmhouse that's been in my family. Um, it used to be my my cousins have a place that is almost like Newport Mansion half the size worthy but but you know my uncle had built it and but they built it on this huge farm and the old farmhouse was used as the pool house mm -hmm. they built this giant pool and so as kids we'd go down there and get the rafts and we were always creeped out well then later when my cousin got married they renovated it and that's where he lived and he said nothing when his parents passed away he moved into the big old mansion and that his father had built and our mutual aunt and uncle moved into the old farmhouse. Well, my aunt started telling stories, how she'd do flower arrangements, and in the morning the flowers would be lined up. Mm -hmm. You know, my uncle would always do the dishes at night, and there would be a puddle of water with no water source up above in the morning. She would, was looking Ooh. for the fishing rods when her grandchildren were there, and the next morning the fishing rod, rods were across the stairs that you would trip over them. Wow. So she starts telling the stories. Well, then my cousin starts telling the stories when he lived there. He just didn't want people to think he's crazy. <laughs> now his daughter lives in the house. Really? Uh, and the daughter says when her son was four years old, she goes, Mom, why don't you sit on my bed and tell me stories like my ghost grandma? <laughs> so I believe. Wow. I've never seen, I walk right. in the house like, okay. Yeah. Never seen, but these stories, three different, three yep. separate. So I believe you saw the I little girl. I don't get it. The, yeah. I don't understand it. But whew. And I'll share a story, and too. stories in town. But back in the, yeah, absolutely. But, but, but um, a couple things. Yeah, I, I kind of believe, too. I don't understand it and whatnot. Uh, a quick one. When, when I was in high school, I remember we had some bookshelves, you know, on the wall. And in the middle of the night, 
we heard this crash and we all came running downstairs and the, the, it just a, a loose something or other, they had fallen down. Stuff was everywhere. And we, we just said, oh well, gosh, that's weird. Let's just go back to bed. And we did, got up in the morning and it was straightened up. <gasps> Straightened up, and not, nobody and, in the family. And no one got up. Oh my god! To this day, we have those. Could that. also be the elves that make the shoes, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the books were not set up right. They were just. It was just like someone had wedged it up there and put it back. That was really weird. And um, was you know, it an old house? Well, kind of old. Yeah. But um, we we talk about that as a family now. Remember the time when the bookshelves and no one to this day admits that they weren't you know yeah. did anything to it. Yeah. Just kind of crazy. But there there are stories in Hopkinton, right? Well, so the Sin old stone house right off the common that used to be a hotel mm -hmm. that has lots of stories because that had people murdered in it and you know it was an old that's the old, one you mean hotel. behind kind of one at the right the next to the graveyard next to the graveyard uh, near one ash oh, Street. That, okay yeah, yeah yeah on that side on the on the other side from one ash so mm -hmm. it's right there and that has all sorts of creepy stories it's a private residence though now. Well, Lake Whitehall has a lot of stories too oh, yeah. and stuff, and especially when the spa was there and things that happened up there. I mean, Sandy Altamira, um, one of the old Claflin houses yeah. um, that's now torn down um, over on Elm Street, um, she talks about a story about um, a rocking chair that used to be um, go back and forth, oh, and then when it was done rocking, the door, the door would open, shut, and be done. Oh my God! Yeah. It's in inexplainable. And there's a lot of interesting stories that are in the Hopkinton Independent that uh, Kathy Boudet researched and shared. Um, oh I won't my. You read them all, they're all it all came out. But <laughs> you know, the un just different things that have happened. I didn't realize there were that many murders in Hopkinton. The Fenton Street murder in 1882. Ooh. And, um, you know, I'd skimmed well, over these. Well, we know these. of a several, several since we've been here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, they haven't started haunting. These are the old-time haunters. So Hopkinton's ghost town in the 19th century, a dozen summer cottages built by uh, Charles Temple. Maybe that's um, part of this Lake Whitehall business. Um, different, different occurrences. So I won't give it away. I mean, go online go or find, read, yeah, read the stories, well, actually, but they're really to, interesting. And if you want to hear the stories, um, November 9th at the library, they're actually going to be reading the ghost stories from Hopkinton. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. So, so one of the things... Um, you know, this past week um, we had special town meeting, and it was really cool that we um, now have at least gone the next step next of approving hurdle. the new new school. Right. And you know, remember that we have to vote again on November 9th coming up. Oh yeah. Speaking yeah. of yeah. happenings, yep. So that that's good accomplishment. I know that today, actually, I guess it just happened. Um, is Spirit Day at the high school. So oh, the kids are all dressed up. And they say H Camp's going to have some great pictures of these kids. That, um, <laughs> we, heard about, we heard about a Hungry Hungry Hippos costume. I know. <laughs> somebody's saying this is probably the best array of costumes that uh, maybe has ever be been fun. seen up there. And so then that's um, great. at 9 30 this morning was the center school parade on the common. Oh, with the cool oh that would have been cool. cute to see. Will it probably be on H Camp? I oh, remember. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, yo, you know, I have to tell you, my kids. I, some of my favorite costumes, um, some were just intellectually clever, and other times they were just like, my daughter was Madeline. Well, yeah, figure out, yeah. redhead, you know, we got the whole bit. Um, she did kick one of the mother's aides who was dressed like a creepy witch because she was scared oh, <laughs> when she was in like first or second grade. Wow. <laughs> um, well, but like, you know, uh, the, the Connor, I, sorry. No. Okay. Favorite costume. Connor went out dressed as a businessman with a briefcase and was ringing doorbells door to door. And oh, he, I remember you, that. Yeah, I know you I did. Remember. And he goes, I'm your worst nightmare. And the parents are looking at him like, uh, You're what? a perfectly nice kid. <laughs> I'm the IRS man. I'm <laughs> <laughs> as a math major, it was yeah. just so that's really good because he was yeah. all dressed up, and he's like, "I'm here to collect." You know, I'm the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you know, because you looked at him like Connor. What are you? What are you doing? Right, that was clever. Was and like you know, the twenty something. I love how seeing like the, the kids are at their offices. You know, a lot of corporations are doing fun things. People are dressing. It's you fun. Know, it, it is. It's just you know, just I, being a character. I don't think Andrew was that creative. I mean, he was like army guys or pirates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Football player. I mean, we. And some of those I, you know, I would do, you know, they were a Patriots player and a Patriots cheerleader right. and things like that. And I'd dress them up kind of matching for years. But um, a few years ago, um, Melissa was the Morton Salt girl. Oh, that's funny. That's cute. And yeah. that was very cute. And this year she's Rosie the Riveter. Oh, I like oh, that's that. that's cute. Love that's it. That's 
cute. Well, gosh, I know Emerson and Evan would always go dressed they, yeah, as they would always some creepy kind of zombie, you know, scream mask, whatever you that, need. That was Brad, Evan's favorite for a cup, Brad for a couple of years actually. <laughs> yeah. And then Kira, she was doing the, you know, Foxy Brown, you know, with, yeah, the, with the big afro, and Roland, yeah. who was went into high school with her, was one of them. So to, this, Evan came home last night to get some stuff to wear. And I don't know if everybody watches this show. It's great. It's called Empire. And, uh, so his girlfriend's going as Cookie Lion. Oh, my and then God. Hev Heaven's supposed to be Lucius. <laughs> so he's going to wear this suit. And, you know, it's all about the mogul, you know, hip hop. Uh, That's funny. You know, record producer. That's funny. Kind of thing. But it's fun. They're, you know, TV characters. I don't yeah. wonder what my daughter's going to be. Because New York City, they go crazy, too. I well, mean, she, did, she posted a pic of being something. That's you another know, TV show. Tia and Tamara. They're yeah. some kids from an yeah. old TV show. Yeah. Kind of thing, but, but, yeah, uh, that was on Disney. Yeah, I think she yeah. still loved it. And they were twins, and her girlfriend yeah. who dresses like her uh, Camille, they look a lot yeah. alike. So, so that's fun. Well, well, I mean, Salem will be oh. nuts. Oh, God. And, and uh, we did it once. And, and we never once went at Halloween. Yeah. We've, once gone, is we've gone like, you know, end of September, first week in October. Right. Or gone like first week in November, but, but never was, over Halloween weekend. Well, my brother Lewis visited a few. His first visit here when we moved here, we went in early October, and we it was fabulous. It was just empty, yeah. and we got to see everything. And uh, yeah. creeps it, are still out there coming <laughs> out at you like <laughs> they, they are. It's all year round. Year oh, no, they, year. they have a permit. You can give them a tip, then you can get your picture, just <laughs> like in Times Square. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fun. Well, a little bit of a segue here. Here's too. our guest Hilda. Yeah, we forgot to say hi to her. Yeah, hi Hilda. Yeah, uh, she's she's resting Hilda. right now. <laughs> um, but uh, next weekend, the HCA is having their big event. But, oh. but years ago, they used to do the Haunted House. Yeah, that was the original spot. And, and but there's still tickets available for the HCA event, yeah. Light Up the Night. Light Up the Night on, on uh, November, November 7th. 7th. But I, just, I used to do the Haunted House. And I, I went to really, one of the creepy. Really, yeah. I got into it. Before, you know, The Walking Dead and all the zombie TV shows, she had it I was I was a good zombie and and literally it would take me about an hour and a half to put all the makeup on I I was dripping blood I, yeah. I had metal things sticking out of then me. you had to get in your car and drive there and, the, well, and you know <laughs> a couple of us would talk going what if we got into an accident on the way here? <gasps> they would you say, know, they they're, they're lost cause, they're right. already right. exactly. damaged. Like, I need a little Paddington Bear note saying, this is makeup, don't, do it. it's not right. real. Wipe it off. Um, yeah. And I still have the, the costume, but yeah. it would take me then three hours to get the makeup and everything off. Well, our kids I would love that show. Because I would spray yeah. paint the hair, and I looked. And I that was really a great house awful. for it. It, got, it was obviously got too small for it, I guess. But just it was old. It was sort of they had it creeped out. They had all this going, and it was dark. And then they had lit pumpkins all outside. Mm -hmm. So fun stuff. Yeah. So, oh, so yeah. you know, that and was a lot going on next week. Yeah. Yeah, a lot going on next so week. So let's then. run it down. Let's, everybody so chimed in this morning. With there, is, them. there is a fundraiser next. Um, Saturday night too for Carolyn Dykema at Water um, Fresh at Water Farm. Fresh and you know there's a lot of us doing both going from Water Fresh and doing her event early in the evening and then heading over to HCA but earlier in the day is probably the most important event going on and is is the scouting for food yeah so that means this week you guys on your mailbox tomorrow will be getting bags and please you get the bags and please look at the expiration if the food is expired or the expiration date is before January 2016, the pantry can't take it. Yeah. And then they will start going around doing pickups about 9.30 next Saturday morning, and they'll go all day long. So if someone doesn't get, you know, you can tag like on our page, or there, there's a ton of the Girl Scout leaders on it and Boy Scout leaders on it that we were able to tag each other. But um, it literally supplies the food pantry for probably the next six months yeah. Yeah. each year. Mm -hmm. so and, give generously. and a yeah. broad, spectrum of food needed and so you know and it's really nice that sometimes you guys can dig out you know that expired tapenade that you never wanted but um there are really some heavy duty staples that are needed um you know the macaroni and cheeses pastas pasta sauce flour sugar tea mm -hmm. coffee all those things the basic staples laundry soap dishwashing soap hand, you know bars yeah. of soap toiletries all those really are big needs yeah, good yeah. mention, yeah. good mention. No. So we talked about the storytelling at the library. We've got Carolyn Dykema's event, which is going to be fun too, a hot acoustics um, 
performer, you know. Well, Tim Levitt will, Tim be Levitt will open up. There. Uh, Joe Kennedy will be there. Yeah, Charlie with Carolyn. Carolyn. And, um, and then, then afterwards will be Charlie Farron, who um, was part of the Joe Perry Project in Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. And um, as that was actually is headlining on a huge event going on in Plymouth this weekend. So yeah. it'll be, you know, it's a fun yeah. event. Then, of course, HCA and the oh. plug. That, I mean, I'm HCA. so excited the to HCA go there, event, too. If you really want to go oh, and yeah. you see this tonight, you need to buy your tickets right away. Already over 200 tickets have been sold. There's only right. a limited amount left. Beautiful wow. facility. It's gonna, It's such a jewel. Yeah, it's at the new place. Yeah. Um, very so, exciting. And what else is going on? I'm trying to remember. So on the day of the storytelling is also the day of um, to get out and vote. So okay. you want to oh, go right. to the library, hear a ghost story, and, and, and you know, story. hit the well, middle the, school and like vote for a new school. Vote for the new school. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of things to be voted on that day, so don't mm -hmm. forget. Um, and... You know, other than this weekend, other than trick or treat, pretty quiet, pretty. pretty yeah, I you think know. So. Well, it's cabbage night tonight. Who knows what could be happening? So, is that a local thing or what is cabbage, cabbage night? What is cabbage <laughs> night? <laughs> cabbage <laughs> night is huge. Yeah, I mean, what is I've it? never heard of it. I don't know. Different. It. I think it's got different terms in different regions. In New England and I think upstate New York, it is definitely mm. cabbage night. What, what do you it? do? Mischief Eat a cabbage or what? No, it used to be that you would take like stuff the night was, before the night before Halloween, and that, that oh, I, did, I, didn't, uh, I didn't perform as much in the night, trick or treating. So in the but you take you take you you take out like the stuff that's going rotten in your garden. Oh God! Uh -huh. And it goes into people's mailboxes, windows, soaping, oh. toilet papering trees. Oh, I mean, bad. my friend and I were like, she texted me this morning. I'm still up for it. You want to do it? You're good. <laughs> Where I grew up, we it, call that Devil Night. We yeah, call that Devil Night. So it's night. got different night yeah. names. Yeah, in Ohio, we got. But yeah. tonight's the night where people egg houses, cabbage, oh, oh, no. toilet papering. Oh, we're not things. promoting this. No, we're no, not don't promoting know. this. Don't do it. <laughs> I'll give you their address. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, oh my cabbage night. Yeah, we were, I, we were big night. toilet papers. Oh so my god. We always did that on Halloween. It just you know, well, the no, trick or treat well, Halloween was, was more trick or treating. Well, yours was so pent up, you had to wait three weeks to get to it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you were doing it all at one time, <laughs> lighting firecrackers, probably all of it. <laughs> well, you know, it's like you know, I'm first generation, and my dad didn't get to trick or treat as a kid, and so but he got into the kids coming to the door. Yeah. A little bit too much. I mean, he wouldn't get in costume, but he'd squat down by the store door when they would like ring the bell and jump up at him, oh. and then for one year. He laid on, you know, we, my parents live in one of those little ranches, so the front door and the garage door are right next to each other. He'd lay on the floor of the garage door, and when he'd hear them walking down, he'd start rattling the garage door, and then he was, he had a, this is how old it was, he had like a cassette player that was playing people screaming, and he'd hit that as soon as the doorbell would ring if he saw they were little kids. Oh, wow. So, and I lived with that, man. <laughs> we, <laughs> we used to really decorate for Halloween. Yeah, and we Part did of the too. decoration was this dummy that sat on uh, a, a bench that was out by our front door. And then we had the gravestones and all that. Well, trick-or-treat night, sometimes um, the kid's dad would sit out there and as trick-or-treaters would come. So these kids had seen this dummy and knew it was a dummy. Well, then the dummy would come to life and chase <laughs> over that second. Uh, Michael kind of does that in our own yard. Um, <laughs> he gonna... does a lot of handyman stuff. So we, he hasn't put it out this year. He may be out there doing uh -oh. it right now, but he's does a cemetery that is all gravestones of dead serial killers, their real birthdays. Oh, my God. Oh my God. And then he actually, I mean, you guys know, he's actually fairly handy as carpentry work built a full-size coffin yeah and he has a Cause everybody has one of yeah, those and, and it's kept in my garage so you know <laughs> um so he has made a dummy that goes in it and it goes in and then sometimes the dummy comes out and he's in it in the exact same outfit wow. and he would chase kids around the yard and i'd be like <laughs> so you guys are yeah married to him for <laughs> that's great we're doing something like that this weekend with that uh, in rhode island where uh, some of you know len cabral the uh, storyteller uh, yeah he comes storyteller school, been coming yeah. to center school for years is uh, a first cousin but his home he loves halloween he and his family is renowned and around cranston and providence the kids start coming you know uh, near five o'clock and he does the same thing but he has actors and they're decorating the trees and he's got zombies and folks coming out of coffins and shoot you next know. year i need to be I one know. of the zombies we, i know i will be a zombie okay, but, and we have never gone all these because you know all the years we were always kind of doing things here but we said all right we're going to go down there and see uncle lenny's because it gets in the newspaper and everything that's be fun. So funny that's so funny so 
So, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a lot of places had Halloween parties last year, and last week. I mean, TJ Spirits had it last week. Yeah. Right. Uh, the Rod and Gun Clubs was last week. I guess they're My friends George wanna... and Julie won the the. Um, oh, at TJ's. What? TJ's. Yeah. They won the contest there. What did they? They went as their favorite drinks. He was Bud Man. Yeah. In a full Bud Man costume, and she went as the Angry Orchard. She was dressed as a tree. Oh my God. Well, they should have won. That's fabulous. That is fabulous. Oh Good for them. I guess they figured that some people are want to stay home and you know give out candy or something on Halloween. But it's fu it's going to be fun. Adult night Saturday night. A lot of yeah. Places we we are all going, going yeah. out to uh, fireflies. fireflies and yeah. Marlboro Hot, Hot fun acoustics is playing. Yeah. yeah. She's so probably going to wear fun. a mask. No, I'm not. I'm surprised. So you you won't be able to get your costume fix on this season this year. Well. It's very elaborate, very intimidating, and it's better for a haunted house. <laughs> well, or you can, just you can go else. with something else. You have to go as a zombie. Well, I did, I, you know, one year I did go as Bonnie Raitt, but my hair was yeah. longer, and I had the white streak, and I had the, the faux guitar, and, mm -hmm. and I was channeling my inner Bonnie Raitt, my chick power oh, yeah. uh, rocker. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, my favorites are really getting ghouled out, and... Um, I, I used to, I did this before it was Vogue, and when the kids were little, even my daughter would say, I know you're my mom, but I can't <laughs> look at you. <laughs> oh, one last thing to also shout out about, and it's already up on our, it's pinned on our page, is we yes. have that Shopping for the Cause oh. coming up on December 2nd. Yes, indeed. Register, um, vendor space is almost sold out already. There's new vendors, new sponsors uh, coming on board. December 2nd. 2nd. Um, we want to thank already Trina Mackey coming back as a presenting sponsor. Uh, Chesmore Funeral Homes, a sponsor, Brenda Catino's medical practice. So and, it's, it's and fun. registrations are coming in, so we'll so be, be talking fun. more about that um, but, as we um, get everyone closer. Everyone have a happy, happy Halloween. Halloween. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy. Happy Halloween. Yeah.